Hello everyone, welcome back to nearly stock Kerbal Space Program 1.12 except for my Real Rockets mod where I continue to test the various rockets in my Real Rockets mod in order to make sure that they work properly for stock so that I can remove the realism overhaul requirement that is currently stated on the mod and hopefully I'll get through it this time but uh, there are actually quite a few rockets to go through. The first one is Launcher 1 and Launcher 1 is actually supposed to be air launched. It was, I think, the first one that I made because uh, I, I don't think there was anybody making... Uh, this is the lower stage engine. Um, making Launcher 1 at the time. So it's very, very plain. There's not much to it. But uh, we have a payload adapter. There's a second stage tank. It's supposed to be launched by a 747. There are fairings. Uh, well, the shading is weird. Like I said, it is an old one. And... Also, it's meant to work with Textures Unlimited, but I'm trying to see how it is without Textures Unlimited. Bearing definitely looks like it could do with Textures Unlimited. I might have to redo this this particular rocket anyway. Um, but we'll see. Let's just see what kind of delta V it gets all together and whether the thrust weight ratios are okay. Then we put the tree. So uh, I started off with the second stage, which is the upper stage in this case, and then uh, we've got Newton 4. And then the payload adapter, and then the fairings, and then the first stage, and then Newton 3, which is the first stage engine, and then fins. Well, I mean, that'll be enough delta V to get to orbit. Oh, well, vacuum, it's. Well, we don't even, even have a payload right now. Thrust weight ratio is fine, either way. Okay. Uh, let's put some payload on, whatever this can fit. I don't, yeah, it can't fit something like that. Um, let's put that and uh, bonus control core, and I'll just say root to that. Okay. Well, now our delta V is not so great, but it should be enough to get to orbit. The second stage thrust weight ratio is not too good, but it should still be enough because of the boost that the first stage gives. Um, honestly, I think we could try to get into orbit just like this. Let's see. I want to see the plume anyway. I don't want to put it on a 747 just yet. It doesn't look great. I think it probably needs edge split on some things. This is like the first thing I made, so... Yeah, it's got some shading issues. Okay, well, I can't use that. All right, and go. Considering it has to control itself going through transonic speeds while dropping off of a 747, it should have pretty good control authority. No reaction wheels, though, as usual, except on the little probe core I added. Somehow it looks a lot better right now. <laughs> but don't know how it will look in sunlight or something. Okay, we really need to flatten out here. Okay, staging. Okay, fairings. Well, that's an interesting way to fly off, but I'll take it. Clearly, I was new to making the fairings as well. It might be that we fall a little bit short of orbit, but then just pack a little bit less as far as payload capacity or optimize the trajectory. Probably the trajectory could be improved a little bit. Of course, it's supposed to be launched by a 747, so it's not supposed to be launched from the ground anyway. Well, I'll let it complete orbit. I'll enable crossfeed and enable that tank so that it can feed on through. Well, that does have cross-feed. But it's not reading the Delta V here, so... Well, it's still going, so... It is feeding from here, yep. But... Uh, that's it. We are in orbit. Uh, just a little bit off from here, so just some optimization, but I don't feel like I need to change Launcher 1 at all. Uh, I mean, I'd have to change the model. At nighttime, it looks fine. <laughs> Just in uh, in light, it doesn't look great. Okay, next up. 
Long March 3. So, uh, it has three stages, and as usual, I'll just start with the upper stage first. Long node. Okay, so there's two YF75s on the third stage. This is also a fairly old model, too. Uh, so that's like that. And then the second stage decoupler goes on there. And let me just put a payload adapter. So... Payload. Well, it's stock, so um, we're going to have. Does that one work? That that's almost right. So sorry about that. We don't have a great size for this, but it's almost 1.875. I think uh, 2.5 is well, just a little bit too big. So you can use. 2.5 meters or 1.875, 2.5 will be too big. This one just a little bit too small, but you could probably tuck in the base and then I'll put on a decoupler and some payload. Okay, so sorry for no custom fairings. Long March 5 I think I made some for, but I forgot about Long March 3. Uh, so, second stage tank. And it is 3C there. And then the second stage engine, which goes in the center, and then the verniers here. The verniers are made so that they only go the right way. So... You might have to rotate them. And you can put them in pairs. It should let you put them in pairs. Okay, there we go. So yeah, again, you'll have to rotate them so that they go in the right way because they only gimbal on a single axis in the x-axis. So uh, making sure that they go in the right way is important. And it'll only let it snap in the right way. So then the first stage tank, which has this sort of hot staging grid on it. And then the first stage engine, YF21. And then the boosters. So there's booster decouplers, four of them. And then the Long March 3 booster. And that's a uh, Long March 3C for us. Well, that's a nice thrust to weight ratio, 1.4. That's no problem. Technically, it's hot staging so that we ignite the engine, then decouple. But let's. Okay, so those are the boosters going off. Then the engine and the verniers, but in order to see the right thrust to weight ratio, let me have the staging first and then get the engines because otherwise we won't see the right delta V or thrust to weight ratio. And then that decoupler is not the next thing. Okay, so we've got a lot of delta V. Let me make sure that this isn't feeding in. That's probably happened. Oh, those are locked. Okay, so. First of all, we have enough thrust weight ratio there. That's okay. And by the time we get up there, we're practically in orbit, probably. Um, this is probably a little bit OP in general, but maybe you can use it specifically to get to higher orbits or something like that, because it's got this what is really a hydrolock stage. So I feel like it's meant to go to higher places. Right now our payload in there is, that's 10 ton, up oh, this one. Right now our payload in there is only like 7.5 tons, so that's not a whole lot. I mean, tell me if you want me to nerf this, but it's functional, so I think I'm going to keep it this way. It just has a lot of delta V. It'll get off the ground. It can probably get to orbit by the end of this stage. Which is maybe a little bit early. <laughs> uh, use a bigger fairing. I don't know. I'll think about nerfing that, but I'm not sure it's necessary. So that's Long March 3C. Let me ch take a look at the Long March 5. 
Long March 5, I think, just has two stages plus booster. Boosters. I'm just gonna put it like that with the decoupler there. I think we probably need more payload though. We should be looking at 20 tons or something like that. So that's 27 tons. The fairings can certainly fit that and more. The upper stage engine is the YF-75D, and I believe there are two of them. The, uh, the problem is the Long March 3 stuff is getting mixed in here. Long March 5 core tank. And actually, they can omit the second stage if they want to. They can have it core alone and put the fairings. So the fairings can go on the core as well. It has the nodes for the fairings too. The core engine is the YF-77, and then there's two of them, like so. And then the boosters are liquid boosters, so there's a booster engine. Long March 5 booster decoupler. And the Long March 5 booster tanks. They have the fins built in, but they're not functional fins in this case. And then the booster engines. So each of the boosters has two engines. So instead of having them all at the same time, let me just have one. And then put the engines and then duplicate. Alright, so that, to the best of my knowledge, is a Long March 5. Well, you don't really need the upper stage to get to orbit, but that's actually probably right anyway. Because again, it can launch with the core plus boosters without an upper stage. So the booster, this Long March booster is actually the separation, that's why it has solid fuel there, so that's the staging of it. Alright, let's go through. Well, that's not a lot of thrust weight ratio at the start. I think we've got too much fuel. Let's take a look at what kind of tanks would be equivalent to these so that we can redo the fuels. I mean, it looks like these boosters are like 1.875 meter tanks. so. Really, the max they should have is like three of these. The core then is like a 2.5 meter tank, maybe maybe bigger than 2.5 meters actually. Sorta, of, it's a little bit less than the 3.75 meter tanks. I don't think the fuel that it has in there is wrong. I think that's fine. The boosters are more of a problem. Alright, so I adjusted the fuel in the booster tanks and also doubled the thrust of all the engines. So the YF100s, the YF77s, as well as the ones on the upper stage, one of the YF75 variants. And let's see how it goes, because we have the Delta V. If you take a look at vacuum, we've got 4,672 with a 27 ton payload there. And uh, with the adjustments to the thrust, we have a 1.38 thrust weight ratio at sea level there. Uh, when this stage starts, it should be close to one. And then the upper stage has 0.5. So should be smooth, right? Oh, but then the boosters are sort of cantering out. Okay, well, these are heavy-ish boosters. I thought having my decouplers would be better. Um, let me just try auto strut to heaviest part. Maybe that'll be good enough instead of putting actual struts. Let's see. SAS on. Okay, throttle up and launch. Well, auto strut seems to be fine. Still don't know about these bits shooting out, but... 
interesting look to the stock plumes in this case. Oh, this wobbliness. Uh oh. Uh, okay, and the tank was wobbling in there. All right, all right. More auto strutting. It's auto strutted ahead of time. Uh, actually, grandparent part would work just fine for that too. I'm just gonna go with heaviest part for the core in that case. Hopefully, that'll do the trick. SAS on, throttle up, and go. Okay, booster is set. Well, those went off well. I would like this stage to not make orbit, but I think it's going to sort of make orbit. Let me try the fairing separation now. Ooh, little bit iffy on the top one. Oh, maybe it won't make orbit. That's good. It's gonna be close. All right, staging. Ooh, that's a little bit iffy. Okay, it's it's away, but maybe maybe separatrons on that would be a good idea. And this doesn't have built-in RCS, so that would have to be added. Except for the tiny reaction wheel in the probe core, it doesn't have a reaction wheel either. Well, I'm a little bit lopsided as I was talking there. The engines do gimbal, of course. Okay, a lot lopsided. Alright, but that's orbit. And with enough to spare to transfer to the moon with a 27 ton payload, I think that's adequate. So let's revert there and call Long March 5 clear. Next up is Neutron. Nope, not spelled like that. Okay, so second stage is the upper stage, but it's a bit of a catch here because the first stage, and I don't know if their current variant of Neutron looks like this because this is made for N. Um, the first stage is sort of encapsulating the second stage, right? So we have a second stage decoupler that is a ring that goes on there. There's this hidden node there. And then there's the Archimedes vacuum on this stage. And then that decoupler goes on, on like that. And then the payload goes on top of that. So let's see what we can put. We could probably fit more than that. It's a fairly wide rocket. Well, this uh, 18 ton tank seems to be okay. I'll put a little controller and then reroute. And down here, we'll put some Archimedes engines. Okay, so nine Archimedes engines. Well, not enough thrust, lots of Delta V. <laughs> um, let me just make sure. That's maybe too much Delta V, not enough thrust. I'm thinking maybe we should reduce the fuel. I mean, that's a lot of fuel. My propellant is so that the stage can be recovered, potentially. It's sort of a 3.75 meter tank deal. Let's say the main tank is something like this, maybe plus a little bit more. So 7,920, so 8,000, 9,900 or so. Well, that's like half what we actually have in here. So I need to cut that in half. Let me see if I need to uh, just to match up with the volume, we take a look at this. I mean, it's sort of like that. Maybe uh, it could have a little bit more than that. Okay, um, so it has a bit too much. We'll say it has one and a half times this. So let me make the adjustments and then maybe a little bit better, but it's probably over overdoing the. Well, I haven't locked this. Okay, so it doesn't have that much delta V. 
All right, well, now we have 1.57 thrust to weight ratio on the first stage. Well, actually 1.44 at sea level. And we have 0.69 on the upper stage. Uh, considering the boost we get from the first stage, it should be fine for the second stage to go that long. And we get 4,706 meters per second out of it with an 18 ton payload. So that's, that's looking good now. Let me try it out. Okay, no launch clamps for this one. It's meant to sit on those legs anyway. SAS on. Okay, that's not working. Throttle up and launch. I think I basically put the same plume on all the engines as far as the stock plumes are concerned, so apologies for that. Uh, I might need to stop the thing wiggling from inside the fairing. Uh, auto strutting, still necessary. Let me just auto strut to root part here. Definitely helps. This would probably go steeper uh, in order to come back down safely. Well, it would reserve some fuel for its recovery, so we'll just say that much. Open fairing, RCS on to stabilize here. Ooh, okay, okay, go. How'd it go? Oh, well, yeah, that could be a problem. Okay, we need it to be a little bit more stable. Let me see if the RCS is good enough for that. Okay, up we go again. Okay, okay, let's say that much. Feels like it needs to coast a bit. Maybe the RCS isn't strong enough? Let's just say point prograde, how about that? Safest thing to do for release. Okay. I'm gonna... Try and RCS out of here. No, no, keep, keep pointing. Good. <laughs> okay, maybe a little bit of thrust. Not too much. Okay. Oh, that's twitching a lot. Okay, go. So that's a bit finicky. I'll turn off the RCS for now. We can use this. Um, oh, right. Let's just go stability assist. Well, not as much surplus as some of the other rockets we've tested, but that's probably because we reserved some for landing with the first stage. Anyway, uh, RCS here is working. Um, I just use... <laughs> uh, I used the models of the RCS that are included in the Shearstrad engine pack, so I was a little bit confused by that, but yeah, that's just built in. Okay, so there we have it. That uh, works. I'll say it works, and 18 tons is fine. I mean, technically it launches like 12 tons, but we're getting more than the Earth amount for all of these rockets anyway. So that's Neutron. Next up... New Glenn. So, bigger? Well, uh, well, maybe not so bigger. Uh, well, it'll be it'll be taller. It is uh, the case that Neutron is pretty wide. Not Raptors. I don't know why Raptors are trolling here. But uh, BE three U's, and then the first stage tank. The first stage tank has the decoupler built in. Oh. I'm going to leave the user to figure out the fin situation. I'm not bothering with that aspect. We were just testing these parts. I would use procedural wings for the fins. And I obviously don't have those here. Seven engines. 
at the bottom. Uh, apologies for the fact that the, there's a missing bit between the bottom of the tank and the engines. It's a little bit sad. It does have the little legs, such as they are, like that. And we'll test whether they can stand properly. It's got fairing. Oh yeah, we've got a fairing. Okay, good, good. Be a pain trying to use the stock procedural fairing with this. Okay, and then let's see what we can put in here. Can we do the. I, I don't think we can do the five meter tanks. So. And it's it's a three point seven five meter rocket here. It looks like so the three point seven five meter tank doesn't quite make it. Um. That's a bit of a shame, though. The jumble fuel tank can work. But it's supposed to be able to carry a bit more than that. Um, that's not going to fit, though. Uh, the physicality of the tanks in stock don't quite work with this. I made it a little bit smaller, because it's supposed to be 7 meters, and then I made it a 3.75 meter rocket. But... Technically, technically, it should be like four meters something, probably. Let me just check. Yeah, 4.48. So it doesn't fit a normal stock scale. So I made it uh, 3.75 meter. I probably should have made it five meter. I'm underdoing it a little bit. Anyway, locking the tanks there. We're carrying about 40 tons instead of 45 tons. Well, in this case, the upper stage is sort of underdoing it a little bit. First stage seems fine. We barely make orbit with this, so maybe maybe it's just right for this business. Ah, uh, let's try it. I, I, if I can get away with not changing it, I'll just not change it. Now, technically, it's supposed to reserve some fuel down here, but. Then maybe I'll I'll do that. Maybe we'll just say it can carry one of these jumbo sixty four tanks, and try to make it do that, and reserve some fuel for the landing of the first stage as well. The fins will be another mass to worry about. Now, of course, it doesn't launch standing on its legs like this, but I'm just doing that to make sure the legs are happy. There's no weird bouncing going on. I'll auto strut to root part here, just that one auto strutting. And throttle up and launch. And then we can raise the legs. Ah, oh, we have more than enough anyway. Okay, staging. Oh, go ahead. Alright, that's fine. We're losing speed though. Its thrust weight ratio is lower than I thought it said it would be. Well, 0.4. Well, we'll see if we can. Well, our apoapsis is fine. I could probably even level out right now. So it's not going to be a problem, I don't think. Bearings? Oh, it was smooth. Maybe a little bit of pitch up here. I think I'm being overly optimistic there. Does the RCS work here? Yeah, the RCS works there. Alright, well that's orbit. Uh, not the most ideal situation and certainly not a lot of extra this time. Um, New Glenn is a little bit undersized, admittedly. So it's not able to do what it's supposed to do exactly. But I don't know what how people feel. Is it better that it fits the stock diameters, and it's a 3.75 meter rocket. Uh, maybe I should make it 5 meters, but then that's overdoing it. Uh, for now, at least, I don't think I need to change it, though. It's operational. It can work. It can work. So, and well, at this scale, you can hardly fit too much more inside the fairings. So there's that. So I'm going to leave it be. And let's see what's next up. Next up is Pegasus. Well, I'm not going to do a test with Pegasus on the L1011 or anything like that. So I'll start with the Pegasus instrument unit. And then there's a third stage. 
that's the third stage. Pegasus XL stage three. So that goes like that. And so just uh, stock the couple like that and then put that there, I guess. Yeah. And then of course it has to have a payload on top, but first let me get this first stage decoupler on here and then the first stage. Okay, and then a payload. It's a little bit tight and the fairing colliders might hit the fuel tank colliders, so let's say one well, of these one ton tanks in there. Does the first stage actually control? It should. It doesn't? <laughs> um, it doesn't seem to have any gimbal. I guess it relied on the fins. That's not good. Fine, fins. You just put these winglets. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and not that we need throttle because it's SRBs, go! Uh-oh, stability is not great. Again, supposed to be launched by an airplane. The payload is wiggling in there. Okay, staging. Well, that seems like Delta V to me, game. Uh-oh. Eek. The plume could do some work, but it's definitely providing Delta V. And it seems to have enough thrust weight ratio. So, that thing lied to me. Oh, maybe it put it at the fairing level, that's why. These are the stats for it, I guess. Well, if you play your cards right, that would probably get you to orbit. And... But then you're in a bind here, because... Um, this doesn't have RCS on. And actually, 692 is not a whole lot to work with. But I guess maybe it can get to orbit. Let's say... Let's wait a little bit. We don't have reaction wheels on here, either. That's the control core, but it doesn't have reaction wheels. So, we're currently retrograde. I'm gonna fire and try to turn very quickly to this side. Alright, can we make orbit like this? Well, SRBs all the way does take some planning, but we are in orbit. It's probably a higher orbit than we need, but... We could do a radio burn or, or something to try and get rid of the extra energy. But for now, it seems to work. So, okay, no need for any fixes for Pegasus. It's just that I was putting the Delta V up here and I didn't see that. Okay, yep, that's fine. Next up, the old version of Starship. Probably not going to take too close a look at this because Literally everyone is going to use a different version of Starship anyway. Um, so I'm not going to be finicky about it. There's, you know, a sort of lunar lander variant of it. There's a Starship lander variant where it's just a little bit. And there's a crew pod. So this one it doesn't have a separate crew pod that's built in, but that's meant to be a cargo one, even though it's got the the windows in. The Starship body one, the Starship, let's go with the Starship body one. The Starship body one is the one that has the crew pod that ejects. And we, there we go. Fortunately, there's a seam in the middle of the window for some reason. I think Textures Unlimited did not let me notice that. It doesn't come with fins. You'll have to use some procedural wings or fins for that because, well, that changed over time anyway. And Raptor engines. Well, let's see. I don't have any particular nodes because, boy, that's been changing too. In fact, the whole look of this, including the way the bottom is shaped, is completely different. 0.84 is fine. I think. Well, 1.42 is even better. And 2057 seems right. We need... Uh, let me get a sea level and let me get super heavy. 
Well, there's the old tank with the fins built in, and then this tank. Let's go with 2022. But again, you should just use P.E.K.K.A.s, probably. Mm, keep putting it on an engine instead of... You know what? I don't care. Uh, let's just see if numbers work out. I'm not going to launch this one. Um, yeah, the lack of shininess is because we don't have textures unlimited. Okay, that's however many that is. And that stage, well, that definitely has enough thrust weight ratio. Delta V 3971 without any payload though, but this is a crude version. Well, we're, we're off, but I'm not going to fix it. Um, I don't have hangar extender, I can't actually see the top of this. So, yeah. It depends on how we read that, but it's at least not got low thrust weight ratio and it's enough to get to orbit and all that business. So I'm not going to fill around with it. You guys are probably going to use a different Starship and Super Heavy anyway. Uh, next up, Vega C. So um, I'll start with the adapter. Avum stage. Oops. Okay, I'll start. I should always start with the upper stage. Avum stage, and it looks a lot better with Textures Unlimited. And then the adapter. The engine is built into the stage. Fairings are available. The adapter has a decoupler. It's pretty big here. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, let's see, what can we put in? Well, not that big. You might need more of a spacer. I mean, that's a 10 ton, no, that's a 5 ton tank there. Let's just go with that 5.5 tons. So after the Avum stage is the Zephyro 9 decoupler, and then the Zephyro 9 third stage, and then the Zephyro 40 decoupler, and then the Zephyro 40 second stage, and then the P120C decoupler, and then the P120C first stage, and then you have the rocket. So, how is it? Well, I mean, 2.67, uh, it'll be a nice frisky launch for Vega. I mean, it's a solid rocket thing, so I feel like this is appropriate. 4,120 meters per second, but 5,000 vacuum, but we've seen that for a lot of things. We've seen 5,000, and I've made the case that it should work out properly in G and SQ anyway, so... We will go with that, and I'm going to lock these. The Avum stage is not meant to have a whole lot. It's just to fine-tune the orbit after the SRBs do their work. And the SRBs have a very nice thrust-weight ratio. So, let's see how this goes. SAS on, throttle up, and go. Oh, yeah, okay, auto strut to root part. Whoa. 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 These SRBs do have gimbal root part on all stages right now. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. All right, let's revert. I'll try to be a little bit more careful. Okay, go! Serious uh, effects here. Okay, staging. Oh, but it can flip. Uh-oh. Alright, 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 alright. Uh, okay, try and use that RCS up there. 
Well, I'll leave it as an exercise to the user to figure out how to keep this stable when it's got that kind of thrust weight ratio. Easier in realism overhaul. We're gonna get to orbit without the third stage. Well, we, we still need a third stage, but we have some energy to sort of dump from it. Okay, well, let me dump the fairings. And... Yeah, we, we need to waste energy from the next stage. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Pointing straight at the ground. Well, uh, okay. Well, it worked. <laughs> okay, let's make sure that this is okay. I left it spinning a little bit. Mod propellant a little bit limited here. Uh, not too bad. Most of that liquid fuel and oxidizer is the payload, so... Just want to check out that the Avum engine works. And ignition. Uh oh. Propellant engine. Hmm. Stock. I guess stock doesn't like it when you've got RCS and an engine on the same thing or something. Well, no, I think it's just the plume. Hold on, let me turn the RCS off. Okay, our orbit is changing. It's just the plume isn't working for the stock one. Please just use real plumes. <laughs> Please just use real plume. Um, yeah, I think that's it. It's just the stock doesn't like having RCS plumes and engine plumes on the same deal, whereas real plume doesn't mind. So that's my theory. Otherwise, it works. It doesn't, it's not supposed to make a sound in space anyway. <laughs> I like my sounds in space. But anyway, it is in orbit. And I don't think I need to change the Vega C. So we are on the last one. Vulcan. Now with Vulcan, I did not make the SRBs. So we're just going to have a core alone Vulcan, which is bad. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, you may have to underfuel things, and that's actually how it is. So there's Vulcan, and then there's the RL-10s, Vulcan Centaur engine. That's fine. So two of these, RL-10C-1-1s. Dash dash I'll make it so that the flag is like that. And then the first stage tank, first stage tank. And then the engine mount. And then BE4s. BE4s. Okay. And then some sort of payload. I think it's 20-ish tons with the SRBs, but it's much less than that without them. Well, it can accommodate a 2.5 meter tank. This doesn't have a decoupler built in, so it's going to put one. That's 9 tons. Let's say 13.5 tons. Without SRBs, I think that would be reasonable. Okay, delta Vs look fine. Thrust weight ratio at sea level does not look fine. But actually, that's sort of the way it is with Vulcan. So, what I'm what I'm gonna say is, we need to underfuel these both, and I would consider that actually nominal. So yes, do put boosters, and it's not refilling it. All right. So with the fuel loads that I put in there, uh, so. I think 80% on the upper stage and 80% on the lower stage. Launching. And it would be very gradual. 
This might be a little bit heavy. 13.5 tons for Vulcan without any boosters might be a little bit heavy. No, really, I should reduce how much fuel there is in the Centaur and probably increase the fuel in the first stage. This is overdoing the Centaur a bit. Um, oh, we have a plume problem here, too. Okay, well, I'll fix the plumes on this. I thought, I thought, I think I already had, it's just I didn't propagate it. Yeah. Yeah, um, I didn't copy the configuration into here. I fixed it because the other RL10s had the problem too. And I fixed those and I just forgot to copy it into here. Alright, well that did not bring us to orbit, but it's not too far off, but... Uh, well, in addition to getting the plumes fixed, let me try and redistribute the fuel somewhat. And... I mean, the RL10s definitely don't have more thrust weight ratio or any... I mean, it's not 0.18, it's actually 0.65 here. Which, you know, it's not too bad. But let's see, let's take a look at a tank of a similar size and see whether this sort of thing is reasonable. Well, that's a little bit small. It's so 3.75 meter. That's a bit big. Overall, once we adjust, that's probably it's about right for the volume. I think people should just put boosters. Uh, maybe the payload capacity is a little bit less than this. We'll just say nine tons. Okay, launching hopefully with the plume fix and also just 9 tons. Throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Okay, the more vertical with that stage, and yes we have plumes now. Might as well dump the fairings here. Now we have too much Delta V. Um, well, we'll see. Yep, I think we have, uh, well, so the answer lies somewhere between 9 tons and 13.5 tons. And maybe just having a steeper trajectory initially it was a big thing. That's still locked, so... Alright, we're in orbit, got some extra, and that's that. So, I will update the mod with the fixes for stock. And I'll put the updated uh, link in the video description. Uh, so it'll be the newest version of the Real Rockets mod. And I will proceed to make sure other things that I've made work in stock. But for now, we'll sell for this. This is probably the headline one because of all the rockets involved. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.